All right, so let's go ahead and focus on the topic that we wanna talk about, the live webinar. Uh, every step is important uh, in regards to the USC's field test procedure. Uh, I think everybody knows where do you find the field test procedures? Well, it's found in the 10th edition manual. Uh, so uh, in that manual, if you look at uh, chapter nine of that manual, we have the illustrated uh, uh, field test procedures, uh, which uh, goes over each of the steps, goes to the illustration of each of the steps on how to do the test for each of the assemblies. Um, just as a side note, there are other uh, resources that we have in regards to the field test procedures. Uh, one of them is a DVD that we have available that goes through, again, the procedures, uh, runs through showing you, you know, the different steps and so forth. So uh, again, if anybody is, uh, wants other resources in regards to the procedure, you can look at that. Uh, also in the manual, uh, in the back of the manual, in the appendix, we have the abbreviated uh, part of the field test procedure. So if you uh, think that chapter nine is, you know, is, is I'll say too cumbersome because all the illustrations and everything, you go to the abbreviated uh, format and those are really just one line type uh, uh, procedures that you can look at. So again, different things that, that are out there. Okay. Uh, just to give you an idea in regards to the USC 10th edition procedures, they are I'll say either recognized, accepted, or adopted uh, by various uh, agencies out there. Uh, a lot of the uh, different certification entities also recognize the 10th edition. Uh, so even, for example, TRIO uh, out in Florida, ABPA, uh, AWW Cal Nevada, uh, even ASSC, they, they have a California, Arizona, Utah uh, certification that, that uh, also recognizes the 10th edition. Uh, so just realize the, these uh, procedures that we're going to be talking about are ones that are um, recognized uh, quite a bit throughout the country. So one of the things that uh, we want to make sure everybody understands is, you know, this is not going to be a tester course where we're going to go through, you know, learning the procedures and so forth. This is more uh, uh, beyond that. So uh, our assumption is that, um, you know, you know the procedures, you understand the operation of the assemblies uh, so that we can focus on some of the, the, the details about the different steps and so forth. So again, so if you're expecting us to go through each step and every procedure and stuff like a tester course, that's not what this webinar is for. So just giving you a heads up, okay? Oh, hold on, I gotta let somebody in, okay. All right, so in regards to why every step is important, uh, what we're going to do is kind of categorize it. As I said, uh, we're first going to talk about steps that are common to all the assemblies. Uh, and that includes, as you can see, the preliminary steps, uh, flushing of the test cocks and vent valve, and bleeding the field test kit. So really, why are those steps important? So starting out with as simple as the preliminary steps, I think Everybody's pretty familiar with those preliminary steps being the uh, NIIO steps, which is the Notify, Identify, Inspect, and Observe. Starting out with as simple as notification, okay? Why is that step important? Well, realize that when you're notifying uh, the customer, you're actually notifying them that you're going to be shutting the water down to run the test uh, on this particular assembly, okay? When you're shutting the water down, realize that depending where the assembly is located, okay, for example, if the assembly is service protection, when you shut the water down, you're actually shutting the water down to the whole facility. Okay, so it is critical that you make sure that the customer understands when you test this backflow preventer that is out at the service connection, you're basically shutting off the service to the facility. Okay. So realize that, you know, even though it seems like a simple step, I'm just going to no notify, it could be a very critical thing because you may have, you know, in the facility equipment running, all that kind of stuff. They need to be aware of that because you are going to be the sh uh, shutting the water down to test to that test that particular assembly. Okay. Sometimes when you test an assembly that's internal, uh, so it's internal, not service protection. Realize that even at that, notifying the customer that you're going to be shutting the water down, 
is an important step because you know some of the equipment you may be working with are some of the pumps, some of the different boilers, different things. Uh, and if you're going to shut the water down, even though it's to a point of use, uh, you're going to be shutting the water down to that piece of equipment. So when you close that shutoff valve to shut the water down, you're shutting off, you know, like the makeup water line or the water line to that piece of equipment. And if they're not aware of it and the equipment's still running, water stops flowing, you could burn the pump, damage the equipment, things like that. So again, critical that you notify the customer that you're going to be shutting the water down. Okay. And sometimes what we tell people is that sometimes the notification may be several uh, agencies that you have to notify. So don't think that you just have to notify the customer. Uh, example here, you know, if the backflow preventer is in a fire system, okay, uh, you may not only need to notify the customer that you could be shutting the water down, but realize in a fire system, a lot of the shutoff valves will have things like this. They have tamper switches. Uh, they have alarms and so forth. So if all of a sudden you start shutting the water down, the tamper switch may kick off and then hit off the fire alarm. Uh, so sometimes multiple agencies have to be notified. So that could include not only the customer, uh, it could be the fire alarm company, it could be the fire department. So again, the notification becomes a critical point as part of your procedure. So just, just realize that. Uh, the other preliminary steps is the identify, okay? Uh, identify the assembly that you're testing. And some of you are saying, what's a big deal? You know, I just go up to that assembly, that assembly I'm going to test, I'm just going to go ahead and identify that. But realize there may be some situations where uh, it could be a little more complex. So, for example, if you come up to a, an area like this, which one are you supposed to test? Uh, they all look the same. There are multiple assemblies. You know, a lot of times you may see this in like a strip mall kind of thing uh, where you have different services to the different uh, companies uh, that are in that strip mall. And all of a sudden you see several of these assemblies out there. You get called by one of the customers to run the test for this particular assembly. Which one uh, are you supposed to test? Okay. Uh, well, one of the, one of the good things uh, in regards to a situation like this is uh, uh, a lot of the administrative authorities would require some kind of unique identification uh, for those particular assemblies. So even though, for example, you see the same make, model, and size of the assembly, the one unique identifier is that they all have individual serial numbers. So they have unique serial numbers. So sometimes the administrative authority will say, you know, that's good enough. You know, as long as they have that unique identifier of the serial number, then you then the tester can identify which one they're supposed to test and so forth. Other times, sometimes the administrative authority may require additional uh, identification. So sometimes you may see tags, additional tags for each assembly, or it may say it goes to this address or this suite or this customer or this company kind of thing. Uh, so just realize, you know, you may come across a situation where uh, when you identify, uh, you gotta you gotta be able to determine which of these assemblies am I called to to test. Okay. Ultimately, when you identify things, you're gonna have your test form. So as a tester, you're gonna see that you have your test form. Depending on the administrative authority um, that that uh, you're following, sometimes they'll have a blank uh, form that you need to fill in. So part of identification is you actually have to fill in you know, the make, the model, the size, the serial number, all that kind of stuff. There are other administrative authorities They may have test forms that have the information already pre-printed. So all you need to do is just confirm, hey, this assembly I'm working at on, I make sure the make, model, size, serial number matches what the information that's on the test form that's already pre-printed, okay? So just realize the tester, different, different ways in which different administrative authorities uh, have the different test forms to identify the assembly that you're working on. 